Will you pray with me? Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks that we can gather here. Dreaming of that sweet by and by, but resting in this place too, and feeling you now. Speak to us now, O God. Move in this space. Give us your word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. There's something very interesting that happens in the appearances of Jesus. I wrote on my sermon that as it happens, as you get away from Easter, but that's not actually true. Because even on Easter, these things happen. And that's this. Sometimes Jesus comes to the disciples, and they know who he is. The upper room stories, where Jesus comes through a locked door, and they see him right away. The stories before and after Thomas and John, or in Luke, where he goes and eats a piece of fish. But sometimes, sometimes they have to work harder than that. Sometimes they can't quite discern if that's Jesus or not, and it takes them some time and some effort and some sort of clue from the risen, the risen Christ. Sometimes they have to work to recognize Jesus, even as he stands among them. Now, in the Bible stories, they usually do, because otherwise they wouldn't know it was Jesus to put it down in the first place. But how the new varies. Mary recognizes Jesus when he calls her by name. The disciples in John 21 recognize him with miraculous catch, and when they get to the beach to find breakfast waiting. And this morning, on this story that takes place on the evening of Easter, he's recognized but the breaking of bread. Jesus journeys with the disciples. They don't know who he is. When they come to the table, they meet him in the sharing of bread, which is a pretty good descriptor of our own lives. Let me say more. I mean, I will say more. But it's clear that this story points to a communion practice. Maybe not the same exact one we have now, certainly not the exact same one, but some sort of riot. A story told to see Jesus in the breaking of the bread at the riot. One of the debates in the Christian church is what happens here? What happens when we bless and break the bread? I'm not going to go deeply into it because that's an entire like Bible study lesson between Roman Catholics and some Lutherans and us and Baptists over here. But all of us, even the Baptists, who have the lowest church version of it, believe that something happens that is worth happening at table. Believe that in some way, shape, or form, when we come to this table and break this bread and celebrate this ritual, this rite, this sacrament, Jesus is present among us. When we share the words, remember the stories, and share the bread and the cup, that Jesus is there in ways that go beyond our comprehension, beyond our full ability to understand, but ways that are powerful and meaningful nonetheless. That's actually why I love communion so much. That and the other meanings attached to it. Because I love the chance to gather as a church, whether here as your pastor or when I'm at wider church events as a participant, Break bread and share Jesus and know that in ways strong and small we meet the divine and recognize Jesus in the breaking of bread. At communion we share bread and Jesus is there even in those times when like the disciples we don't fully comprehend how. 
communion, we practice this rite and meet our Lord. Well, there's another gift that comes from the fact we do it at a table. And I already alluded to it with the kids in the front. And it points back to how the first followers of Jesus did this rite. They almost certainly had some sort of rite, by the way. It, it wasn't the words of institution. It wasn't uh, quite the way we do it. But they had some sort of rite. We don't know what it looked like. But after they had their service and their rite, they would take this symbolic breaking of bread and keep going to a very real meeting to a real sharing of bread, breaking of bread, just like Jesus had with them so many times before. Why might this matter? Because we have meals, because we're humans, and that's a part of our daily lives. And part of the promise of communion is that Jesus is there, not just at this table, not just in this space. Now, he is in this space. The psalmist says, surely the presence of the Lord is in this space. And that's true for our worship space, for our sanctuary, for this literal space that's been sanctified by a century and a half of worship on these floors with this same roof. But it's also true in our homes. It's true in our errands. It's true in moments of joy and moments of grief, in our work, in our leisure, in our education, in our play. And it's true in our meal time. Because we have met Christ in a breaking of bread that is symbolic, we know that we can meet Christ whenever we break bread together. Every meal is an opportunity to see Jesus again right there among us. Now, I'm not saying every time needs to be that way. We don't treat every single e-meal with the same sanctity and ritual and Seriousness, we treat communion. That's a lot of pressure for a lunch break. But every time has that chance. If we're open to it. And that's especially true, friends, when we break bread together as a community of faith. I mean, this is something you know, right? If you think about it. Think about the Easter breakfast this year and the previous years. Think about the reception for confirmands in a couple of weeks with cake and punch. Think about the meal we shared two weeks ago on Reunion Sunday. That wasn't just fried chicken and green beans and mashed potatoes. It was a meal of fellowship as we broke bread together as the body of Christ and recommitted ourselves to each other and to our God. Friends, Jesus was there among us in that meal. But it's also there in times that aren't quite as celebrated. Jesus can be there when we gather the friend for lunch to catch up and share our joys and concerns, share our hearts. Jesus is there when we share a meal with one of our homebound members or with someone who's recovering from surgery or illness and we bring them a plate, a casserole, a salad. Jesus is there whenever we gather. All we have to do is open our eyes and see and recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread. Let me stretch it just one more step. Because we don't always break bread with just each other, right? And, and now even with their friends and family. Sometimes, if we want to best see Jesus, we have to break bread with those 
whom Jesus calls us to serve, to love. Matthew 25 invites us and tells us that Jesus is there among the least of these. The poor, the hungry, the downtrodden, imprisoned, the sick, those who mourn. And in those times, too, when we share meals, we can see Jesus. At my last call, there was this amazing, really, uh, pattern or program thing the churches did together. Now, there was no Bama in my last call. There was very little coordination amongst the churches. They did, we didn't talk to each other very much. We didn't get together very much. It was very sort of sad. But we had one thing that we did. And my last church was part of it. Every month, every like, twice a month, really, one church in town volunteered to make a meal. I was always in the same place. It was in the Methodist church downtown because they had a big kitchen and they were right downtown. And this church made a meal for whoever needed it who was in need. People came across the street from low-income housing. People came across the other street from the homeless men's shelter. People came from the streets who didn't have a place to live. People drove in other places, some, or rode their bikes or walked. People who needed support came twice a month for a hot meal prepared lovingly by one of the churches in town. And bingo, where they got toothpaste and shampoo and other needed supplies. Friends, that was not just, at least for my church, cheesy mashed potatoes and ham. It was a chance to be and see Jesus in the faces, in the hands of the adults and the children who came to that event, who received our food, who sometimes got leftovers and brought it home. We saw Jesus every single time. We only did it once a year. But every time we were there, we saw Jesus in the breaking of the bread with these complete strangers who we still served and loved as those God calls to love. Now, here we do have Bama, and we don't have quite the homo population in, in Batesville as we'd had in Fort Dodge. Different city sizes. But we do similar things. When we give to the food pantry, or volunteer or give to the soup kitchen in Greensburg, We offer food to homeless in one of the two big cities. You know, somebody asks you for a dollar, if you have time, pick up a dollar instead. Or give them a snack back. And all of these times and more, we can see Jesus because we're breaking bread with those we are called to serve those in whom Jesus has told us he will be. Friends, in a few moments, we will come to this table. We'll share some words. We'll eat some pieces of bread and drink little bitty cups of juice. And we will see Jesus in these very elements. We will see Jesus and the hands, and the eyes, and the faces of those sitting around us with whom we share this table. And if we let ourselves do so, we will also see Jesus in the faces and the love of those that this table empowers us to go and serve. In all of it, we will see Jesus, recognize Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. Thanks be to God. Amen.